In this video, I'm going to show you how to get PCSX2 installed into dev mode on your Xbox Series X and S. Recently, Stenzik has been working on a UWP port of PCSX2, and a beta build has been released that is available for all of us to use, play around with, and thus allowing us to play PS2 games on our Xbox Series X and X consoles without the use of RetroArch. Now this may be of great interest to those of you who want to play games that require the software renderer. It's a lot easier to swap between software renderer and hardware renderer. You can actually do that now. And some people just aren't able to get PCSX2 to work within RetroArch at all. So this is just another option of doing PS2 games. Now for those of you on Xbox One systems, I really don't recommend wasting your time on PS2 games as the Xbox One CPU is notoriously crap for emulation. But I mean, you could try it if you want to, but... Don't expect good performance in an overwhelming majority of games. But before we dive in, you are going to need a Series X or S, and I recommend having a USB drive of any variety. Yes, that includes USB hard drives or USB SSDs. They all connect through USB, so the same thing. Then you will also need a Windows computer to set security permissions on that drive, as well as for installing PCSX2 into dev mode. Technically, you could do that one with any web browser, but you're going to need Windows for the security drive permissions anyway, so we're just covering Windows again. All right, let's dive in. Now to get started, the first thing we need is to download the PCSX2 UWP build. I will have a link to this down in the description below. I'm not going to show any specific web page because the links will likely change over time, so just look in the description for the download link. But once you have it downloaded, just get it extracted, and you'll end up with a pcsx 2 uwpapex file, or apex bundle, doesn't really matter. And the next thing you're going to need to do is source a PS2 BIOS and some PS2 games. So over on my channel, I do have tutorials on how to dump your own PS2 BIOS files from a slim or fat, as well as how to dump your own PS2 games. So if you have a physical collection and an actual PS2 system, you could use this method or, you know, resort to the shady part of the net. I really don't give a crap, but no illegal download links are going to be provided, as always. So, there we go. Learn to use Google. Next, we're going to prep our USB drive of choice to allow for the best compatibility between PCSX2, RetroArch, and all the various other things you might use it for in dev mode. So I'm just going to let my setup instructions from my previous USB setup guide play here for you all to follow along with. After you have your USB drive placed in your Windows PC, right click on it within this PC. Properties. We're looking for the security tab up here. Advanced. Now we're going to go and click on add. Select a principle. Advanced. Find now. And we are looking for the one that says all application packages. And once you have that selected, just press OK. And then press OK again. And now we are going to click on the full control box here. Once that's set, press OK. And we're going to click this box here that says replace all child object permission entries with inheritable permission entries from this object. Once that's done, press OK. It's going to say, hey, we're going to change some stuff on your drive. Do you wish to continue? We're going to say yes. And you might get an error on certain files within your drive. Just press continue on them. And once it's done, it'll just bring you back to your properties. And you can just see that they have now added all application packages. It's set to full control. And we can press OK. All right. Thank you, older me, for explaining those steps. But once you have your USB drive set up, if you've previously used it for RetroArch, you probably are already good to go. You probably already have PS2 games on here, as well as like a PS2 BIOS in your system folder. So if you already have those, you're good to go. You don't need to copy them over again. But if this is your first time setting it up, you could just drag your PS2 games anywhere into the USB drive. It does not matter where you put them. And as for games, they need to be in either ISO, BinQ, or CHUD format. If you want to save space, CHUD is great for that. And then I like putting multi-disc games in their own subfolders. The standalone version of PCSX2 is able to detect within subfolders and get everything sorted accordingly, so it's really nice. And then the same thing for your PS2 BIOS. If you already have one on your USB drive for use in RetroArch, you don't need to worry about copying it over, but otherwise just copy it anywhere onto your USB drive. Does not matter where. But then you can just name it like PS2 BIOS or something so you know what it is easier. 
But the BIOS structure can be a couple of different ways. I actually have two BIOS versions in here. I have an older version and or an older version and then a newer version from my Fat and my Slim. So if you use the PCSX dumping tool, you'll get a BIOS in the format that looks like this. But they do have single BIOS formats available for download in the shady parts of the net. Either one should work just fine. But once you have your PS2 BIOS and games placed onto your USB drive, you can just go ahead and close out of that. We're all done there. And now we could get the PCSX2 app installed onto our Xbox. So again, this does require you to have dev mode set up on your Xbox. So if you have yet to do so, you could follow my RetroArch install guide on how to get dev mode set up and good to go. But once you have your Xbox booted up and into dev mode, you just need to access your remote access portal. So the IP address will be there on your screen. It might be in the bottom right, might be in the top right. Depends on if you closed out that test accounts page. But get that IP address and type it into a web browser. And after you type it in, you might get in a warning about it not being private. Just click on advanced and continue to the site anyway. And then it'll ask you for a username and password. So just get that entered now. And then you should be on your Xbox device portal home screen. So you'll see my games and apps here. We just need to click on add, choose file, and select your PCSX2 UWP app. Click on next. I don't believe there are any dependencies for this version of PCSX2. I've been running it without it just fine. So go ahead and click start. And then you'll get a message saying the install is finished successfully, and hey, look at that, there it is. But with that, we are all done on the computer side of things, and we can move on over to the Xbox. So now over on your Xbox, get that USB drive hooked up to your console. You may get a notification popping up that it needs to be formatted as either Xbox storage or media storage. Choose media storage, otherwise you're wiping everything you just put on it. And then from here, go up to PCSX2 and press your back button, or view button, whatever it's called now. I don't care, it's back. But go to view details and change it from an app to a game. And then you should be good to go there, but I like going the extra step and restarting my console because it's a series console, so it reboots really fast anyway, so who cares? And once the console is finished rebooting, you could just go back down to PCSX2, go back to view details, make sure it's still set to a game. And once you confirm that, you can just go ahead and launch into it. And it might ask you to sign in if you haven't signed into a test account before. So just enter your Xbox Live login information that you bought dev mode with. And then you can just get booted into PCSX2. And you'll get a message about how the settings were reset because they're something changed, something different, whatever. You just installed it. Now this may look familiar to those of you that use standalone Duck Station. So let's get this set up. Head down to Settings. Press your right bumper, and our first selection here is Game List, so we can add a search directory for our PS2 games. By default, it is looking within the uh, PCSX2 subfolder in your Q drive. You don't want to store games there, you're going to run out of space super quick. It's one of the reasons why we're not covering it. But go into your search directory, keep clicking on Parent Directory until you get to the root directory here. Now, You'll see that there's an S drive location where you could be storing games within the PCSX2 folder. I'm not covering that in this video. For anyone that wants to use the internal SSD with dev mode, you know what you're doing, you know where to put that stuff. For ease of use, we are just sticking with USB, so that's going to be under the E drive. So if you already had a RetroArch folder set up with PS2 games, you can head into your games folder, select your PS2 games folder, and tell it to use that directory. Or if you put your PS2 games in the root of your folder, just PS2 games, use this directory. And then it'll scan all the games that you have in that folder and they will populate the games list. But once you have that set, press your right bumper again. And this will take us to our BIOS selection menu. So we need to change the search directory again. So same thing, parent directory. If you have them in the S drive, you know where to find them. But anyway, USB. So if you had a RetroArch system folder set up, you could go into system, PCSX2, BIOS, use this directory. Or if you just put them on the root of your USB drive, you can just choose PS2 BIOS folder, use this directory. But now you can click on BIOS selection, and it will list all the PS2 BIOS that you have in that folder. I will never understand why it thinks this is a Japanese BIOS for my American Slim, but whatever. There we go. And then you could also choose to have Fastboot on or off. The great thing about having Fastboot on, it bypasses region checks, so you don't have to have different region BIOS files to play various regions games. But if you want authenticity, you can 
disable this so you get the full PS2 boot animation every time. But with those two options set, you can open up your game list, you'll see all of your games have been populated, you can choose a game and it will begin to run. What I like to do personally is actually start the BIOS though. Ensures it's being detected right and uh, all that good jazz. But it will also let us go into the PS2 browser and format both of our memory cards. So you'll click on a memory card, it'll say it's unformatted, so you can just format it now. You could technically do this in any game as well, but some people have had difficulty with that, so this is just a nice little workaround. And then you can also format memory card slot too. Now, booting into the BIOS menu is also a great way to manage the saves on your memory cards. If your slot one gets full, you can copy things over to slot two. But once you are all set here, you can just press uh, left and right bumper at the same time. And that will bring up the quick menu here. And you can exit out of the PS2 BIOS. And now we can just go into any game. And then just press A on one that you want to run. But there you have it. PS2 games up and running on your Xbox Series X or S without the use of RetroArch. But at any point during gameplay, you can just press right and left bumper to open up your quick menu. You can save states, load states, take screenshots. You can even change discs between various ones in your selection if you have multi-disc games. Reset your game or exit a game. And just like that, a good majority of the PS2 library is now available for you to play at any time in standalone PCSX2. And even games that are heavily talked about in the comment section like Crash to a Sanity are working right out of the gate under default settings. Once you start doing upscaling and stuff, it starts kind of misbehaving, but if you keep things on default, it does work well. But let's go ahead and talk about some optional settings you might be interested in here in the standalone version of PCSX2. So heading into the settings menu, Right and left bumper are to navigate your menus, like before. So first tab, interface settings, you really don't have to change anything here, so we're just going to move on. Game list settings, we already covered that. BIOS settings, we already covered that. Once again, you can disable fast boot if you want to have the PS2 boot animation every time you start up a game. Emulation settings. In this menu, you might want to turn on adjust to host refresh rate. I'm sure you noticed that there was a bunch of screen tearing in my recording here. One of the ways I found to minimize that is actually to enable this setting as well as optionally V-Sync. It kind of messes with emulation speed ever so slightly depending on your display, but it did get rid of the tearing at least in my testing. Results on that may vary, try it out for yourself. If you don't see any noticeable benefit, you don't really need to enable it. Next up, system settings. We're not gonna mess with anything in here. We wanna just kinda leave it all at default. It's doing its job. But if you are an advanced user and know how to do CPU overclocking, underclocking, for specific games, you can mess with the cycle rates there. But for most users, I just recommend leaving it at default, not messing with it. Next up, graphic settings. I love how these menus don't work right, by the way. It's awesome. But anyway, our first option up there is renderer. We could choose between the Direct3D 12 renderer or a software renderer. So for specific games that require software mode, you can use that in the standalone version of PCSX2. And you can always refer to the handy PCSX2 wiki for any games that might require software mode or other specialized settings. Link to this will be in the description below. But then you can also enable V-Sync. You can set an aspect ratio of auto 4x3, 3x2, 16x9, so on and so forth. FMV aspect ratios. You can choose the deinterlacing mode for your PS2 games. Automatic works great. You could use bilinear filtering. You can enable integer upscaling, so that way things appear more sharp, especially in 2D games. It will result in black borders around your game, though, depending on, depending on the title. So, personal preference on that one. Internal resolution, you could crank this all the way up to full 4K if you want to. You could go past that. Rule of thumb is, if you are experiencing lag where you didn't before, just lower it back down. For me personally, I usually set this around 3 or 4, and just call it a day, that way I don't have to worry about it. Mip mapping, leave this one on automatic, provides the best overall results. 
bilinear filtering, trilinear filtering, anisotropic filtering. You can adjust these as you see fit. Dithering, you can scale this or just not. CRC fixed level, leave that on default. Blending accuracy, leave that on basic for best results. Texture preloading, this lets you cache textures before the game starts. Results in longer startup times, but might have better performance in game. So give it a shot if you feel like it. Otherwise, just leave it on none. GPU palette conversion, you could try this out in games that you might not get full speed in, see if it helps out, but otherwise you could just leave it disabled. Manual hardware fixes, this is going to be on a game by game basis, you can refer to the PCSX2 wiki if any of these need to be used, otherwise just ignore them. And then on screen display, so whenever you write to a memory card or adjust a setting, it'll pop up a message in the top left, you can disable that if you want to. You can show the speed of the current emulation, FPS, CPU usage, GPU usage, resolution, GS statistics. That'll show up all in the right corner of the screen. So you can kind of see how well your emulation is running if you so choose. And then there's no audio settings, memory card settings, controller settings, hockey settings, or achievement settings available at this time in this build. These will probably come pretty quickly, but as of this video, they do not exist. But that pretty much does it for our setup process. And there you have it, PCSX2 standalone setup on Xbox Series X and S. Overall, a pretty straightforward experience and awesome performance in most things that I've been able to test so far. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I'll do my best to try to help you out. Thank you again, as always, for watching this video. Really appreciate all the support you all show the channel and just helping us keep it going. But here at the end, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like this tutorial. And if you haven't already, hit that sub button, notification bell, so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. I have loads of content coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in helping support the channel further, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.